Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik. I'm cable video practice leader of Lyre Reading. I'm here in Denver at SCTE's Cable Tech Expo show at the Cisco booth. We're talking about distributed access architecture with Brett Wingo, who is vice president and general manager of the cable division at Cisco. What are your customers telling you here at the show are their top interests in cable access and optics? Well, what we're seeing this year at Cable, at cable Expo is really different than we've seen years in the past. We've traditionally been much more oriented around hardware and speeds and feeds and getting broadband and video to the customer, we're starting to hear from customers is, how can you deliver more to me at the end-to-end -end architecture level, up at the software? What's SDN and NFE going to bring? And how do I get faster feature velocity and more things into customers that make a difference? We're starting to hear more about the end customer, starting to hear more about architectures. We still have great products, great hardware, great portfolio, but the discussion has become much bigger. And it's a great change from years past and a great opportunity for us here at Cisco. Right, we're hearing lots of chatter at the show about remote Phi, which makes the physical elements or Phi elements of docks of space, gear, remote or separate. Is this the ticket to achieving virtual CCAP or virtual CMTS? One of the things that we're really starting to have happen here is we need to think about a long-term architecture for our networks. Remote Phi, our next generation CBR8 CCAP product, our current products, and then all the software that bring those things together, actually create a path where our end customers can spend less money on both their CapEx and OpEx in order to deliver these solutions. Remote Phi is a way to start that path down to both virtualization and also to software-defined networks. What we're doing with Remote Phi is separating out some of the layers so that we can have a more simplified network, a more digital, ethernet deeper, fiber deeper type of network, and get to a point where we're really driving a next generation architecture that builds over the years. It's not just about introducing Remote Phi, it's Remote Phi that works with our current 10K, it's Remote Phi that works with our next generation CCAP product, and in the future, Remote Phi that will work with a virtualized CMTS. So yes, Remote Phi is really about creating that path to the future, but it's a, a long-term path built on software and architectures. It's a big buzz around the show. It's a big partnership with other people in the industry, and Remote Phi is going to be the next generation of what we see in cable access. Brad, how are customers resonating with your business strategy and approach for distributed architecture and path to virtualization? What we're seeing is a very different customer mentality coming in. And what I would say is that customers are becoming less focused on a specific part of the cost and more concerned about their total operating cost. That can be in OpEx, it can be in the CapEx that they spend, but it can also be in what additional services can they derive and what other services can they deliver to their end customers. So we're seeing a very different conversation happen with our customers. Our product portfolio is much more focused on saving those customers money while we help them deliver more services. That's the key difference that we're seeing and that's what's resonating with customers. Specifically, when we talk to a customer about what's their CapEx to OpEx ratio, we hear anywhere from one to five to one to 10. They spend a lot more money maintaining their networks and getting the service to the customer than the actual things they invest in. So what we're working on is a strategy that resonates, especially with the executives, on where do we go, and we're seeing the engineers who are at this show really starting to think about how do I optimize my overall spend and the overall network versus just being focused on the next thing that I buy resonating really well. I think it's a very different strategy than we had a year ago, and we're starting to see some followership from other competitors thinking about, wow, we've got to really look at the total picture and end-to-end, -end. and Cisco has such a broad portfolio, it's a great opportunity for us to really lead. Brett, let's talk about 4K and Ultra HD, which are also hot topics here at the show. Will the move to CCAP and DOCSIS 3.1 make it easier for cable operators to fit 4K and Ultra HD into their channel lineups? 
Video is really the game changer for all of us in this industry. And it's not so much about how the video gets delivered, although it's very important and we're all working on technologies. What's really interesting is that video from a pure broadband perspective will be over 75% of the traffic in a few years. We're also seeing that how video is converged, how it's delivered, where it's delivered from, the cloud or locally, um, those are all big parts of the discussion. So video, 4K, compression, how we get that to the customer is a very hot topic because we all know that's what we need to deal with. And what's really amazing is we're starting to see end customers not care about whether it's on their large TV or their iPhone or their Samsung device. And really, they want that experience wherever they can get it. They want it seamless, whether it's through uh, Wi-Fi, an SP Wi-Fi network, or through the broadband that's delivered in their home. Huge change with video. We have to help our customers get ready for it. And then we really want to simplify all of the network operations that come with video. Yes, we would all see it, like to see everything move to IP video, but it's a long path. Convergence, simplicity, and really being ready for that 75% of all traffic being video is what we're all about. So video is a huge delta. 4K will drive that. More and more screens, more and more experiences, more and more Wi-Fi will also drive that. Great experience with video matters a lot more than how fast your email loads. And so that's what we're really headed for. How do we help our customers be successful? Okay, Brett, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.